Hey, you, it's me, in the place, with the books, to review. The proper place. Yeah, we're back in the room that isn't echoey and doesn't have a speaker right there. Or the thing that goes, <laughs> whenever anybody comes in and just like decimates your drums with like a shockwave, much akin to when uh, they cut the fingers off of um, Sauron. Or when I pass gas. Tomato, tomato. Um, Alright. I only have a handful of books to review this week because I was up late. So you think I yawn usually? Now I'm thinking about yawning. It's actually make. I just did that yawn thing to myself. Um, but yeah, I was up late because last night was the round table here at Famous Faces and Funnies. And uh, I had to decimate at the. Um, trivia, trivial, the, the dork trivia that we do. And by decimate, I mean tie to other people um, for first place. And then the rest of the group was tied for second. <laughs> um, it was an interesting night. But you should all know, interwebs, that uh, most religions will tell you that you, know, you shouldn't judge other people. I'm not religious, so I want you all to judge our cameraman, Big Sexy Dave who was given the clue. It was supposed to be a one-word clue, and you were supposed to guess the movie from that one word. His clue was inconceivable. And his answer was, my mind is drawing a blank. And now we must judge him. We must judge him harshly. <laughs> oh. I don't have anything to throw at you. <laughs> this, <laughs> this whole room is nothing but things to throw. Um, nothing that I, you know, can potentially break if I need to. Mm. Where's the big foam die? Ah. Uh, <laughs> giant. <laughs> giant foam. Can't find anything to throw. This is sitting behind him. Um, Alright. First up on our reviews <clears throat> is the sixth gone. So close to the ending that it breaketh my heart. We get our first glimpse into the origin of Drake Sinclair. Um... Everybody's in the afterlife. Um, this prince in China. Um, no, but the goon is there. No, really. There's actually, um, when they get to the ferry boat, which is actually like a, for this setting, a, you know, like Mark Twain-esque riverboat ferry. Um, when they get there and they they find the, uh, the, I don't know, the, the, the landing team that's there to prevent and whatever. And you know that guy. That's the damn goon. Bloody hell. <laughs> he's, What's he doing there? He's chilling, you know, helping people on a boat, you know, like you do. Um, work for hire. He's a goon. That book is so good. Buy all the trades, read the hell out of that, and then um, go and comment on either the tube of you or the geek of Gunna and say, you know, oh my god, you were so right. I should have been reading this all along. I'm not worthy and will burn my entire collection out of. Uh, it's clear inferiority. Um, action comics. Look, it's got the, the three and the S. Look, I, I, it makes me happy that they used to do that back in the day, so you knew which order to read them in. Um, continuing, um, with Superman's hunt for, well, this one he finds Supergirl. Um, Paul Pelletier. I love Paul Pelletier. There's one panel that, um, was a bit wonky, but other than that, it's Paul Pelletier greatness, and I, I love Paul Pelletier. Um, look at that page. I just, that's just beautiful. That's just a beautiful page. Look at him all super manny. Look at her all super girly. And uh, you know, he can make that clunky armor look, you know, still like clunky overseamed armor, but look how it hugs both of them and their shit. You know, you can, he once again looks like Superman in, you know, all, oh, and she looks, you know, super girl. Ooh. So, it's good. It's nice. It makes me happy. Um, but this leads to the... This will lead to the, the death of Superman story in which we'll figure out how in Rebirth um, post-New 52 original Superman will be um, the Superman of the DC Universe again. And yet there's also a Clark Kent running around and how's that happen? This, in this, you've got somebody running around saying he's Clark Kent and he's clearly not... I don't know what's going on. Um, so clearly there's some, some mystery, some intrigue in the, in the road to rebirth. 
chugga, 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 chugga. That wouldn't be a road. That would be train tracks. What the hell am I thinking? Um, Legends of Tomorrow, <coughs> number two, continues to be so worth the seven ninety nine. And really, you would think, especially with uh, DC's track record with some of the anthologies they've done in the past few years, that this might not hold up. Plus, you know, these characters, you have to be very specific. Like this, this is like a love letter to me. Which clearly means this will be canceled by book, by issue seven, um, because that's what happens when DC does books with things I really care about. There's nothing I don't like in here. Sometimes um, I make it to eight. Sugar and Spike made me go eh, but I had complete faith in Keith Giffen because he's Keith Giffen, um, and it turns out to be great. But Metamorpho, uh, the Metal Man, Firestorm. In fact, they've gone beyond. Firestorm is once again merged. He's merged. He is now. Um, Jason Rush was getting sick and the, the um, Matrix wasn't working with him. So they had to save his life, they had to move the Matrix, but in moving it, it was going to merge with someone else. Um, so when Professor Stein moves it, <gasps> yep, that's right. Ronnie Raymond and Professor Stein are once again nice. the storm of fire. Um, this also gives us a cool new look for the Tornado of Red. Look at that guy. And um, other cool new looks in the same story. Uh, much better than we've seen him previously in, in the New 52. Look at Cliff Steele, a.k.a. Robot Man. Um, so they just give this like, this is just giving me everything. I'm surprised that uh, with the rebirth, I'm surprised this isn't where Ted Cord's going to show up and be like, hey, you know, because they just keep giving me all my stuff back. Then. Savage Dragon, number 213. It's good, don't get me wrong. I love me my Savage Dragon. But sometimes you read these stories and you start to think that if you were sitting next to Eric Larson when you read some of these things, you'd start going, the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> and in my world, that's the highest compliment. But, um, but yeah, uh, the fuck is wrong with that guy? Um, there's, I don't know, there's baby dragons. Dart is hooking up with, like, a baby dragon who's, like, not quite a baby, but clearly young enough where it shouldn't be right that she's hooking up with him. Um, and stealing all the other baby dragons. Um, what is wrong with him? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Uh, totally awesome Hulk. It's totally awesome. I continue to love this book. Um, this time we've got guest artist or... Um, Three or who's, who's filling in here? The art in here is um, Mike Choi. And uh, this is number five. Ooh. And the Hulk part is starting to take over. It's turning out that um, Amadeus Cho does not have the lockdown on the Hulk persona that he thought he did. Um, his weakness, coyote pups, um, as we've seen before. Um, Thor's going to kick his ass because she's mad. Because uh, apparently without him really... Realizing it, he's under the influence of um, Enchantress, who's been boasting that she's his champion in her plan to... Uh, she's her champion in her plan to destroy Asgard. So in true superhero fashion, Thor comes down and asks no questions and just says, All right, well, I'm going to kick your ass because you're, you know... Actually, she may ask questions, to be honest. But she's still ready for ass kicking. Um, don't let me interrupt you, mortal. I'd love to hear about your about Amora's plans to conquer Asgard straight from the mouth of the creature she calls her champion. And you got Cho and uh, his sister going, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> Damn it. And, man, the astonishing Ant-Man number seven is the greatest thing in the Marvel Universe today. Yeah. Um, I love this book. I love this book. I love the art. Ryan Spencer, all, um, not Ryan Spencer, um, what's, what's Nick Spencer, uh, all is forgiven. <laughs> uh, Ramon Rosanas, your art is freaking gorgeous. Jordan Boyd and Will Quintana, your coloring is gorgeous. Um, take that with a grain of salt because I'm not great with colors, but I like it. Um, and VC's Travis Lanham, I even like your letters. Um, letters, we get letters. We get stacks and stacks of letters. 
Um, Black Panther actually came out like almost a month ago, but I missed it and finally read it. And all the hype you've been hearing, this book is so good. Read this book and it's beautiful because I'm um, Brian Steelfries. Um, and Black Panther. <laughs> Titans Hunt. They're all starting to remember each other. Shit's getting real. Um, I both love and yet at the same time feel... Uh, I think I really wanted this to just have them all go. I knew it wasn't gonna, so it's really on me that this, that this disappoints me on a level. I think I just really wanted them to all go, Oh, you know what I remember? And suddenly just remember the entire um, Wolfman Perez run of Titans. Hmm. Um, but they don't. Nope. Mighty Thor is in here, but I, I didn't really read it, so... Moving on. Captain America throws his mighty shield, and then he gives it back to Sam Wilson, because he's really Captain America now. And Cap came back to get his youth, but he didn't want to be Captain America anymore, because that'd be rude to take it from the guy that he gave it to, because he says, hey, I give it to you with no conditions. When Captain America throws his mighty shield... Um... This was, I think, my favorite so far of the standoff crossovers. Um, it didn't feel as rehashy as everything else has and leads nicely into what will be the ending of that run. Um, life is like a superpower. You never <laughs> know what you're going to get. Um, I got the Russian agent for a mother. Um... The last issue of Huck, what can I say? Mark Miller, Ravel Albuquerque, knocked it out of the park. Great. The ending is so satisfying on so many levels. Um, and they're just such likable and relatable characters. It's so well done. Um, the mom's like a uplifting purple man. And Huck has his basically, you know, he's got strength, he's got whatever, but basically his power is to find things. And by find things, I mostly mean he finds what you need. His power is to um, make it better. He is like the superhuman embodiment of your mother's kiss on a boo boo. Speaking of mother's kiss, Lois and Clark, Jonathan Kent demonstrates that he has powers and that he's known stuff was up with his dad all the time because his super hearing kicked in a while ago he's like yeah i could hear you through the walls talking about being superman he's like but you're not superman they have to... the only thing harder than trying to explain to your son that he has superpowers is trying to explain to your son that he has superpowers but he's never known that his dad has superpowers the only thing harder than that is trying to explain to your son that he has superpowers because he never knew that his dad had superpowers but his dad is superman but not superman that he sees on tv because now you also have to explain multiverse the multiverse to your kid um but yeah Holy and of s- course um lois has the line in there from before they knew he had powers in the flashback she says uh doesn't matter to me either way clark no matter what i'll always think of him as my little super boy i'm gonna miss you connor they don't seem to want to give me any form of Connor or Connell in the Rebirth universe. I'll take Jonathan Kent, don't get me wrong, but everybody's been talking about the missed opportunity. Um, the Rebirth, Scott Lobdell, um, out, out, was it Outlaws that they call them? It was uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws? Outlaws, yeah. Um, well, they missed two opportunities. One was to put someone that isn't Scott Lobdell on it, but the other mm-hmm. was, um, because I'm intrigued by the concepts of what he's doing, but... Scott Lobdell. I mean, when he wrote, he, I told you, he, he nailed it on Blue Beetle. I was so terrified of what he was going to do with that Convergence Blue Beetle, and he nailed it. It was great, and everything I loved about Scott Lobdell back in the day was back, but um, I don't know if he's just going to revert to type on... A book that's basically a continuation of what he's been doing. But he's adding in, it's going to be um, Red Hood, Artemis, and um, Bizarro. And they're going to be like like a dark version of the, you know, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, tr- uh, Trinity. And I like Bizarro, especially depending on how close he does to like the Bizarro from the miniseries that I just loved. But um, at the same time, everybody's saying, you know, since Artemis is like a, a younger wonder woman and 
you know, Jason Todd is clearly, you know, a Batman sidekick. This was a miss opportunity to, hey, you know, you've got this Superboy that Scott Lobdell has shoved down our throat as has supposed to be, you know, I was made to be a weapon. So a Superman with, a, you know, a Superboy with anger issues would have, you know, and black and red, he could, they could all dress alike. Um, you'd have a color scheme. I think it, I think it would have worked better that way. Um, so we actually come to a point in the universe where I'm lobbying for why couldn't someone have given Scott Lobdell, um, you know, Super Connor Kent. Mm -hmm. huh. It's come, it's come to this. It's a, weird, it's a weird, weird times we're living. Um, survive, leaving, surviving Megalopolis. Um, leaving Megalopolis, surviving Megalopolis. Um, number four. Southern Bell is a scary ass bitch. Um, we've already known this, but uh, much in that, the only thing that would make you look away from Eric Larson and you know what the fuck is wrong with you would be to be reading one of these while sitting next to, you know, I've interviewed Gail Simone. She is like, you know, one of the sweetest, nicest. But she looks sweet. She is sweet. She's great. And then you read this and you go, "This is what goes on." You. <laughs> God, woman, what happened to you as a child? I don't know if I'm terrified of you or in love, but either way, my heart is racing. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a, uh, people are thrown into pits only to to squish a little, um, and then still talk. It's painful, um, but yeah, I loved the original. Um, Leaving Megalopolis. Uh, if you haven't read this, it's basically um, a pit opens up in the city. That it's like the Megalopolis is like the metropolis of the DCU, or even more so, it's more like the New York City of the Marvel Universe because it's like where all the heroes are. But this, whatever comes out of this, just turns them all into psychopaths. So now the the city's greatest heroes become the city worse than the villains were. The villains left. <laughs> Because they're like, fuck, you know, <laughs> this is, we're out of here. So now there's this group of people that have gone back in all this time later um, to try and get people out, get somebody out and find out what happened to some things. And it's not a place to go into. Um, Extraordinary X-Men number nine. Um, Our kids are lost for a year, and uh, let's just say Anna all bulks up. Um, we find out that in the future, um, Apocalypse gave up on the mutant race, obliterated all of them, and then pulled a convergence where he made domed cities of all the different aspects of the world. So you've got one that I assume is ruled, you know, they call her the Scarlet Queen. He says he got rid of all the mutants, so I don't know if Scarlet Queen is actually supposed to be someone in, based on Scarlet Witch. Um, there's one run by the Stark Self, which is like bunch of cybernetic uh, Tony Starks and they use machine men as their you know um, as their hands-on activities it's Tony Stark's last AI now runs this like whole city and whatever um, the only flaw in it is in the coloring sometimes people do this I never fully understood why um, or maybe it's just a colorblind thing maybe this looks fine to other people mm -hmm. but um Storm in this is neither. She is not. She is neither black nor white. She's kind of gray. I don't know if it's a you know it could be a lighting thing. There's a lot of lightning around, but that's she's kind of gray. She's uh, almost the same color as Colossus. I'm um, gonna go with lighting and coloration cause, because yeah, she does look a little off. You know, she's not. Because at first, I, I, when I first saw the cat, I, didn't, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, they got a, you know, is that a future version of Storm? And I'm like, no, that's that Storm. That's the rest of the team. Um, but she's just kind of gray. Hmm. Maybe she ate something. Um, Marsha Manhunter, number 11. The death of Mr. Biscuits. No! Uh, this this, this Marsha Manhunter book has been so good. I really hope that they pick up, you know, that this team gets to do more with Martian Manhunter post-rebirth. Um, I'm out of books, because like I said, I only had, I had, like, no, t 
time to read last night and then no sleep and then today they were doing testing i had no planning period i was trapped in a room with um 10th grade felons for the entire day so i may just go home and cry for a while that's it Thanks for watching another video from Gunna Geek. If you like geeky stuff, check out our podcast network, our news and articles, and our community forums. You can find it all at gunnageek.com, like us at facebook.com slash gunnageek, tweet us at gunnageek, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash gunnageek, and check out our live programming at gunnageek.com slash live.